So today I'm looking at what is my life about? <laughs> Have you ever asked yourself that? I remember as a young boy when I was put in detention yet again, <laughs> right outside of room number six at McLean Elementary in Wichita, Kansas. Room number six, room number four, room number two. They were all the same because I got to spend some time in the hallway. And they would send me out there when I was too, mm, you know, over the top. <laughs> Dancing in class, chatting with others in class, looking out the window. I wasn't quite attuned yet to what the teacher's uh, teaching plan was. You know, I, I had my own agenda going on. And I can remember sitting out on the floor in front of room number six. But it was always kind of a, it's one of the places I learned to meditate. <laughs> I would take some deep breaths and begin to relax and all the sensory overload of the classroom, I could begin to kind of de-escalate and relax and just breathe. And I can remember, and I don't know how old this individual was, you know, when you're like first or second grade, I mean, you're not always the best judge of other people's age. But I remember this man who is like dressed in a suit and he's walking by confidently, he doesn't even look at me, walking by conf confidently down the hallway. He looks so professional. He looks so together. He looks like he knows what his life is about. And I thought, hmm. And I was just guessing. I was guessing that maybe that guy is about 40. And I thought, when I am 40, I'm going to know what my life is about. And I'm going to have it all together. And I'm going to look so together and so professional. And people will look at me not as a mistake, not as broken, not as a botch. But they will look at me as someone that really has it together. And I looked forward to that day. When I was 40, <laughs> I thought, when is that going to come? <laughs> because we're always, hopefully, in progression. I mean, if we're not growing, if we're not learning, if we're not moving forward, then we're dying. I mean, it's pretty much that simple because life is about growth. You know, if a plant isn't growing anymore, if it's not producing new leaves, if the roots aren't going deeper, if it's not continuing to expand and grow, then it's dying. It becomes more stiff, more brittle. It breaks when the winds come. If we want to continue to live and live fully like Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. You know, he didn't say that the spiritual life was about just settling in. Okay, I'm just going to take it easy. <laughs> no, occasionally, as a minister... I've run into people who are like, I just want to take it easy. I just want to relax. I want to coast. I'm like, oh, great. Good luck with that. <laughs> because life brings us change. And what we find is that we can't just coast. We can't just, hmm, ease our way into it. Now, I've known some people who've tried to do that, but life has other plans. Life will bring its challenges. Life will bring its change. Life will help us if we will allow it to grow, 
to open up. So when I think about the purpose of my life, I first think about who am I? Who am I really? Who are you? I love this song that Don just sang, I Am Light. Now, if I were to ask a person on the street, who are you? Typically, they'll tell me their name. Or, well, first of all, they might say, why do you want to know? But they might tell me their name, what they do for a living. They might tell me about their kids. They might tell me about where they live. In other words, a lot of people so identify their lives with their name, their degrees, with their family, with circumstances that are around them. But is that who you really are? There was a time in my life where I went through, ah, it was, it was a dark time. You know, I mean, it happens, right? It happens in life. I don't know if you've ever had a time quite like this. Uh, I was losing my job. I was losing my career. Uh, lost income. Lost the house. The marriage was going down the tubes. Family members were suicidal. Um, the church that I had devoted myself to, the church organization, um, I wasn't there. I, I just felt totally alone. There were times where I didn't feel God was there anymore. Uh, you get the picture? I mean, I could go on. But it was a time where it's like, well, <laughs> now who am I? Who am I when you take away the title? Who am I when you take away the job? Who am I when you take away the house, the family? Who am I when you take away all this stuff that I had defined myself by? Who am I now? And somehow I found there was still a self there. I mean, you can take all that stuff away and there's still who I am is still there. And it's like, well, who is this? Let me get in touch with this person. And Becca, one of our singers, is also in clinical pastoral education, doing her residency and chaplaincy. And I was a professional chaplain for a long, long time. But this is before I became a chaplain. And I went into clinical pastoral education to do my residency, and one of my residencies was in a psychiatric hospital. And I thought, you know, I was talking with the supervisor who was interviewing me to see if I would be a good candidate to be a, a resident chaplain there. I was telling him about my life. And he's like, Tim, you'll fit in here great. The people here in the, you know, mental facility, psychiatric hospital, the people here you will find are having the same issues that you are having. You will be able to relate with them, and this will be a great opportunity for you to do your own work as well as be here to serve others who are doing their work. I was like, whew. Like Carl Menninger, who was from Topeka, Kansas, the Menninger Clinic, which was a big psychiatric uh, movement and facility. He was a psychiatrist. He said, the mentally ill are just like us, only more so. So everything that we've experienced in our lives, at times it's shaken us to our core. Now, occasionally I've met people who've never been shaken to their core. I'm like, really? How do, how, how'd you escape that? And, and I don't know, I mean, maybe 
Maybe it's our karma. Maybe it's our lesson in life. Maybe uh, we, we all have different challenges in our lives, and God is designing it for our highest and best good. But it's like, wow, you've never been shaken to your core. Okay, good for you. But I'm really grateful. Now, I'm not asking for it. But I learned so much through that time when I was shaken to my core. I'm thinking of one of those quotes where Paul was writing to the church in Corinth. You know, there's letters that were written to the church in Corinth. We have two of them. There were evidently more that were written, but we have two of them in the Christian scriptures And, you know, he talked about we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. Do you not know that you're not even really your own? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That is, we are this presentation of God. We are this embodiment of God. We are this self-livingness of God. And so I consider this body to be a temple. I'm not the body, just like I'm not my car. I mean, it's my car, and I take care of it. I tried to. The other day, the radiator exploded while I was on H1. (laughs) Have you ever been in rush hour traffic and had your radiator explode where you can't even see in front of you? It's a who. (laughs) And I'm thinking, I am not my car, but I am in my car, (laughs) and I want to get somewhere safe real quick. Ah. So we're not our body. We're not even really our thoughts. Uh, I mean, think about this. You can observe your thoughts, or at least, A lot of us can. Now, some people can't. Some people think that they are their thoughts and they believe everything that they think, which is really dangerous. Because some of the stuff I think, I look at it and I go, (laughs) whew, no, you just go over there and you sit down, okay? But we can observe our thoughts. So who is the observer? You. Who's observing the thoughts? If I can observe my thoughts, and evidently I'm not my thoughts because there is an I that is observing them. So when you take it all down, when you break it all down, who am I? I, Or think of another scripture that comes from the book of Hebrews and says, yet once more I will shake down everything that can be shaken so that which is unshakable shall remain. I call it the great shakedown. Yet once more I will shake down everything that can be shaken so that that which is unshakable will remain. That which is unshakable is the real you. That which is unshakable is that divine light living itself as you. I'm I'm a student of the Bhagavad Gita as well as the Bible. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, verse 20. For the soul there is neither birth nor death at any time. It has not come into being, does not come into being, and will not come into being. It is unborn, eternal, ever existing, and primeval. It is not slain when the body is slain. It's like, can you ground into that knowing who and what you really are? I mean, before we can know what our purpose is, we need to know who we are. Otherwise, we get confused with, oh, you know, I, 
I'm this job, or I'm this role, or I'm this degree, or I'm this or that. But when we know who we really are, then we can live from that presence. Okay, so what is my purpose? What is your purpose? First of all, it's to be who we are. It's to be who we really are. Now, in unity, we talk about it as being the Christ presence. We talk about it being that divine presence, that we are here to live that divine presence in our world. Wow, the world needs it, you know? The world needs people who will show up being who we really are. The world is longing for that. I think of people like David Alt who is a friend of mine, new thought minister from Centers of Spiritual Living. And David Alt, in his travels around the world, fell in love with kids in Cambodia. And so he decided that he and his congregation would develop schools for the poorest of the poor in Cambodia. I think about when I went on pilgrimage to India, and I was with the poorest of the poor children, and they provide free clothing, free housing, free food, free education. One student, free clothing, free housing, free food, free education, one student, for a whole year costs how much would you guess? $150. And we whine and gripe about our financial challenges at times. A whole year, a child can go to school and can be clothed from the poorest of the poor and can learn skills and can develop into a mature adult. A hundred and fifty dollars a year. I went there in part to serve, but I felt so served by them. Up in my office, I just saw it this morning. I saw this book. It's about Krishna. And I'm remembering the boy from one of these schools, one of these ashrams, who gave me that book as a gift in India. One of the poorest of the poor. I kept it with me, and I carried it across India. I thought, I came here to serve, but I'm being served so much in the process. So we are here to be who we really are. We are here to really live into our purpose, to live unto ourselves. And the way we do that is about serving serving that supreme, serving that divine presence, loving, loving that divine presence, knowing we are that and loving that divine presence and serving it in one another. There's a reason why there's not just one of us on this planet. There's a reason why we're all different. There's a reason why there are so many needs in this world. It's because it's an opportunity for us to serve. We are here to be the light. We are here to serve that light, to serve that loving presence that is God. We are here to serve that presence in one another and be that presence to one another. 
We watched a movie last night. I mean, you might as well, because everyone's up. <laughs> I don't know about here, but in close to Kailua town, holy smokes. Here too? Oh my goodness, it was like warfare. I mean, fireworks just everywhere and clouds of smoke all night, you know. And uh, at midnight, I'm like saying, oh, Lucia, come here, come here. Look out this window. And I mean, the whole sky everywhere where you looked was just lit up. Everyone was just going all out, lighting it up. So, you know, we might as well stay up and watch a movie or something. Normally, we stay up till about four in the morning and dance like at a South American party or something. But I thought, eh, didn't know of a South American party and had something else to do in the morning. <laughs> so we watched this movie, and it was about this guy who found... And, and I'll just break it down real short and simple. It's about this guy who learned the time travel. And this guy who could time travel, he had fallen in love with a woman, but the woman had already fallen in love with someone else and gotten engaged by the time he met her. So he wanted to time travel before she met this other guy so that they could connect and, you know, his life would be happy. And he had been given this challenge to make a difference in the world. He had been given this challenge to do something that would impact the world. So he actually got there and got to the woman just before she was going to meet this other guy. And he's connecting with her. But then he remembers some of the people that he met in his life that if he went to them, he could change things in their lives. And he decided to do that instead. He made a decision who he was going to be that he was going to make an impact on the world. As I watched those fireworks at midnight and heard them various times, they've been shooting them for a week and a half in Kailua. <laughs> um, as I was watching those fireworks, I thought, wow, this is so cool, and yet... People are spending thousands and thousands of dollars to shoot off all these fireworks to celebrate the new year when what the new year is about is about us choosing who we are going to be. It's about us choosing to be the light. It's about us choosing to make a positive difference in our world. It's about us choosing. It's not about shooting off all the fireworks, and I love fireworks, I'm not putting that down, but what I really celebrate in the new year is us coming to life and bringing the light to the world. What I celebrate is us bringing that Christ light to other people in the world. Yeah, you know, fireworks are great, but be the, you know, I'm going to do a little mm, switcheroony of what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5. You are the fireworks of the world. <laughs> but if fireworks are hidden under a bushel basket, what good are they? You need to get out there and blast your light. We are the ones that are creating what our year is going to be like. Now, at the end of the service, you know, last night we had this beautiful service. We did the uh, burning bowl where we, you know, and as a person who is a pyro as a kid, I love burning bowl service. You know, you get to set stuff on fire. But 
This is about writing down what you want to release, what it is that's holding you back, and releasing it. Not all of you were able to come last night. So at the end of the service, if any of you want to do it, and is Tina around? Tina's running around. Okay, Tina's running around. We have packets. We have packets that are left over, and we also have paper. So in the packets, there is some flash paper that you can write on, pink flash paper that you can touch to the flame, and it just goes poof. There it is. It looks like this. Mm -hmm. And how many envelopes do we have of that still? 30 or 40. And we have extra paper, too, if we need to just go to regular, fill it up with smoke paper. But this is smokeless. And if you get the envelope, there's also a thing in there where you can do your God letter, what it is you envision for this year. There's also a white stone in there, came from Jerusalem, where you can write down what it is that God's spirit, you know, from the book of Revelation, it says that each one was given a white stone, and on that stone they were given a new name. And so what is it that you are called to this year? You can write it down on that white stone. You can fill out your God letter. If you wish, you can leave the God letter here in the God box, put your address on it. We'll mail it back to you at the end of the year, and you can open it up and see how it all unfolded. Or maybe it's something you want to keep with you as a reminder through the year. But... If there's something that you want to let go of, something that's in your way, something that is keeping you from expressing your Christ light, we can light it up. <laughs> we can light it up. Okay? So, for those who would like to do that, we'll do that at the end of the service today. And, uh, hey, I... I really want to thank all of the new people who are here. Um, I've met Cheryl and Michael and my friend Pete, who's here from, they're all from the Big Island. Pete was one of the congregants of the church that I pastored at Unity of Wichita, lives on the Big Island now. And back here, is it Michael and Maggie? Okay. And let's see, I met some other new folks. Oh, Reverend Patty and Crystal were here last night. And we welcome you. Reverend Patty is a minister from Christ Universal Temple in Chicago, which is a phenomenal New Thought Church founded by Reverend Johnny Coleman. Johnny Coleman, who held the light even in times of prejudice, even in times of distress, she lived her life. We bless you. We bless that ministry. Foundation for Better Living. I read those devotionals for years. Mm. And if I haven't met other new people here, you know, we will have a kukui nut lay for you, but I'm going out of order. I'll, any new people that haven't gotten your kukui nut lay before we do meditation? I know I'm changing stuff up. But, okay, right back here. Thank you. Thank you. What is your name? Mahesha? Maheshi. Good to have you here. Happy New Year. Any other new people? Right over here, thank you, in the blue. And what is your name? Ken. Ken, thanks for being with us. Thank you all for being with us. And you online. So here in the blue, thank you, Benita. The man in the blue. Yeah, blue is the color of the month. The power of the month is faith. So let's put that faith in action. And I just invite you as we... 
Take a deep breath. As we prepare for our time of meditation, I invite you, what is your life about? Who are you? What is the vision you have for this new year? Who are you really? What is it about? What is the vision that God is giving you? What is it that's in your way that you need to release and let go? Just breathe into that. Breathe into that. Let Spirit speak to you. Let Spirit speak to you in this time of silence. As we live into this new year, we bring forward our Christ life. We bring forward who we really are, that eternal spirit soul that we are. We bring to earth that presence of the Christ on earth as it is in heaven. 